would like the family members of late Mama Kamela to come and sit in this place. Let us get organized so that so we begin the celebration of the Mass. Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. May we be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, I would like to welcome you in a very special way for this memorial mass. For our late mommy Jan Carmela Voba Adirua. The memorial mass is also an anniversary mass because it was last year, this time, that the Lord called her. Actually, on the 28th of April. And so, this anniversary mass also coincides with the work. That has now been completed on her grave that we see behind here. At the end of this Mass, we shall also bless the completed 
grave where she is awaiting the resurrection of her body. At the end of this mass, a family member will be able to say something about her life. But what I've just indicated is also on the cover of this booklet. She was born on the 25th of November 1952 and died on the 28th of April last year. It is our prayer, therefore, that the Lord who called her to life after here, eternal life, may grant her repose of her soul, may reward her for her Christian and human life on earth, and especially as a mother to her family, that God may look at those good deeds in her life and reward her accordingly. And where, because of human weaknesses, if there are some failings that she had not atoned for at the time the Lord called her, it is our prayer to continue atoning for her sins and asking God to wash her clean and receive her with the saints in heaven. With this, I now invite us to stand up and proceed with the Mass, asking God for mercy and strength for those moments we have not been able to live our Christian lives fully. May God forgive us and strengthen us and renew us through this celebration. Let us rise. I confess to Almighty God Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting.
who is the Lord of all, what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him, they put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man got dressed on the third day and granted that he be visible not to all the people, but to us the witnesses of Christ by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach the He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witnesses that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Subjected 
everything under his feet, but then it says that everything has been subjected. It is clear that it excludes the one who subjected everything to him. Even everything is subjected to him. The son, the son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him so that God may be all in, in all. The word of the Lord. disciples of Jesus were going to a village called Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked within them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped looking downcast. One of them named Cleopas said to him in a reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, what sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and war before God and all the people. How our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to be sentenced to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem, to redeem Israel. And beside all this, it's now the third day since this took place. Some women from the, our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. 
And then some of the, those with us went to the tomb and found the things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophet spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and end in his glory? And then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on further. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is near evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at the table, he took bread and he said the blessing, broke it, and gave this to them. With that, their eyes were open, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. And then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found they found gathered together the eleven, and those with him, with them, were saying, The Lord has truly had been raised, raised, and has appeared to Simon. And then the two recounted what had taken place on the way, and it was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The breaking of the bread. The gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Jesus. Jesus. I'd like to address my sisters, Stella, Eva. The glory is not here with your family, members, spouses and children, those here present and who are joining us uh, by technology from far. And you, my brother priests, who have come to celebrate this day with us, uh, the choir, both uh, the ordinary but also the brass band. All of you, uh, Christians and people of goodwill, thank you for coming for this celebration. It is the second week of Easter, and uh, the readings we have taken are special readings for masses for the dead during Easter time. Focusing on the resurrection of Christ, but also teaching us that with faith, with hope and trust, we who are called by the name of Christ, by the name Christian, should be able to rise at an appointed time. Death is not a new thing. But the death of every individual is new. Many times we don't get surprised because somebody has died. But what surprises us is the timing of their death and the manner of their death. Everybody knows that as human beings, we shall all die at one time or the other. And the Son of God indicated by his own death that all who are Christians will have to pass through this gate of death to be able to go to the glory of God. Because once he acquired our type of life, our human body, by becoming a human being, by taking flesh, 
and living among us, it was impossible for him to go back to the glory which he shared with the Father and the Holy Spirit with that body again. The body had to be transformed through death and once it became glorious body, then he was able to go back to that glory and share once again with the Father and the Holy Spirit. And we who carry the name Christians are on this same journey that at the time the Lord has designed for us, we should be able to transform our physical bodies into spiritual and glorious bodies to be able to see God face to face. The first reading is a story after the resurrection of Christ. Experience of the disciples, the apostles, because now Christ is said that the one that put their hope in who would be the savior, who would uh, uh, liberate Israel, is, is dead. And now, strangely, the also women are reporting that he's alive, but they have not seen him. So now, what, what is left? Jesus now had uh, in the uh, Saint, uh, Saint, uh, in, in the first reading, Peter communicating this experience that his disciples had in the first in the, in the gospel reading to the Christians that this is the Christ whom people do not understand and was condemned, but now God has raised him to life. The, the two apostles or disciples who had got discouraged recognized him when he was breaking the bread for them. And the first reading says, God has appointed him to be judge, both of the living and of the dead. Peter, with the courage given by the Holy Spirit, was able to talk this plainly. And he says, we are witnesses. We ate and drank with him, and he has commanded us. He has commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and of the dead. The prophets bear witness to him, and we Christians are supposed to continue bearing this witness to the risen Lord. The resurrection is a very difficult subject. Those of you who, who go to Mass every day, you heard on Easter Monday, the actual witnesses of the resurrection were uh, the soldiers who are keeping guard. To watch is to have all the eyes open. But that is the story up to now going on, they said among them. So Jesus had now to appear so that the faith of his followers could be strengthened. And the gospel reading is one of those apparitions of Jesus to his followers to strengthen their faith so that they could now announce the good news. As Peter was able to do without fear in the, in the first reading. We continue with this. The faith was handed from the first Christian, from the apostles to the first Christian, from the first Christian, generations after generations, it is our time to share this both in our families, at our workplaces, and in our own environment as Christians. To be able to announce the resurrection of Christ, the way Jesus was able to confirm this faith in the apostles. And the second reading tells us that uh, we shall all die, as the Son of God also died. And this death comes at an appointed time for each person, each at the proper order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end. Our mother, Jane Carmela, has already gone to that step of dying from this physical life so that she can go to the next life. 
we shall follow her. But it is this faith in the resurrection, it is this, this faith in the risen Lord that has power to make us also rise, to make us acquire that new life. Now in the gospel, and I would like to say this to you and especially to my sisters, Sarah, Evelyn and Gloria and your families. The experience of the two disciples who are getting discouraged because of challenges in life could be the same experience you'll be going through. Actually, you have indicated as a family message at the back of the book with the family of Mami Jen Carmela. Thank you all very sincerely for standing with us throughout this difficult, this very difficult time of the loss of our only parent. And we hope you will continue to journey with us in our transformation to new life in the physical absence of our dear mother. Jesus had to accompany these disciples and help them understand the situation in which they were. The family is asking us to do the same. And you should be able to identify individuals who should be able to accompany you in this new life. Otherwise, it will be difficult to understand death and the absence of Mama Jane Carmela in your life. One year has gone that she has left us physically. But we are connected with her spiritually. We are connected with her in prayer. This has to continue that individuals, especially the, the ones who have come here and many who wish to come but could not, should be able to continue to accompany you. That in explaining the situation of the absence of your mother physically with you, you should be able to understand and accept the new life with her absence in your daily life and endeavors. We on our part, as relatives, as friends, will continue to do our part. In the end, when Jesus explained to the apostles, slowly their hearts started to understand what was written about Christ in the scriptures. But still, the clearest vision, truly that this is the reason Lord appearing to us, was seen when he was breaking the bread for them. And after that, he vanished. Because he had now finished his work. What he simply wanted was to confirm their faith in his resurrection. And this is what we shall continue to do. This prayer we are offering today on the anniversary of the passing on of our mother is a testimony of also our availability to accompany you, to journey with you the way the Lord has journeyed with these disciples. And once we have now got this information right, we should be able to share this new life with other people. We are told these two immediately left. It was already in the evening, at the night. But now, no fear. They walked back the seven kilometers or miles back to Jerusalem to go and communicate the good news. Because they were talking, they had not seen him. But now they have seen him, the others must also know immediately. No wasting time. And the good news is supposed to be spread like that. And so we want to pray that the Lord, in his goodness, may continue to strengthen us. The Lord, in his goodness, may continue to bless us. The Lord, in his goodness, may continue to look at the good works our mother, Jen Carmela, did in her lifetime on earth, particularly with her family and also with her relatives and the people with whom she has lived and worked with. The family will be able to say something about her life again towards the end of the Mass, when after the Mass. But when we had the funeral, when we had her burial, she was a mother not only to her biological children, but to me.
the one speaking also benefited from her motherhood. And so, let God look at these values, these good things she did as a human being, as a Christian. And where, because of human weaknesses, if there is something that she needed to have perfected, which she did not do, at the time the Lord called her, may our prayers help her to overcome this so that she can see the glory of God in heaven. And may the children and the family she has left behind continue to receive the necessary support, strength, and courage, both from God but also from us. Not only by our prayers, but also by our presence and what we share uh, with them. May the Lord bless all of you for coming and sharing uh, with the family on this day. And may the Lord reward you abundantly as the family has indicated at the back of this booklet. The Lord be with you.
prayers of the faithful. Dear brothers and sisters, filled with pastoral joy, let us pray more earnestly to God in faith that He, who raised Christ His Son from the dead, may graciously listen to our petitions and supplications as we pray for the salvation of the living and of the dead. For the shepherds of our souls, that we may have the strength, that they may have the strength to govern wisely the flock entrusted to them by the good shepherd. Let us pray to the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O God, who know that our life in this 
present age is subject to suffering and need. Hear the desires of those who believe in you, and may the prayers of those who cry to you benefit the souls of your servants, O Lord. Free them, we pray, from all their sins, and make them share us in your redemption. Through Christ our Lord. I don't want to assist us to prepare some. <laughs> Thank you. 
Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, our most chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing end. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, be. Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis our Pope, Paul Sumgre our Bishop, the order bishop and all the clergy, and the entire people we have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of you, this family, whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O Master Father. God, that you have all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, remember our sister Carmela Jenny Adiwa, whom you have called from this time and yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in days like his may also be one with him in his person, when from the earth. Who will raise up in the hand in the flesh those who have died and transform our not lonely body after the pattern of this, this own glorious body. God, departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were present to you, to all who were present to you and their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. They are the hope you will never end forever. The fullness of your glory, when you wipe away every tear from every eyes, for seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestowed all things. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now pray.
not time, we are going to receive the body of Christ. It's for the Catholics who are preparing themselves. So the priest will come and he will protect from there. Thank you.
celebration of the life of Mama Pamela. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of your only begotten Son, who was sacrificed for us and rose in glory, we humbly implore you, O Lord, for your departed servant, Jane Carmela, that cleansed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may glory in the gift of the resurrection to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hail Mary. Now the order of laying of the race will be like this. The first to lay will be the priest together. And then the second Lord will be the children and the grandchildren. The children will be laid by Sarah Stella with Evelyn and the grandchildren will follow. Among those who lay the flowers again, we have elders present here. Muse Gabu Amacha, Mrs. God, our loving Father, we ask you to bless these reeds. These are signs of our, of our love, both in life and in death. May this sharing of love with our departed mother, Jen Carmela, continue to keep us in touch that we shall continue to love her even in death and that we remain united with her in our daily lives and bless all of us who are going to partake in this laying of the wreath that uh, the blessings may accompany us in our homes and our families we ask this through christ our lord amen, amen.